Hi, this is Marcio Disney and you are watching This Day in Disney History for January 1st. Nineteen twenty-five. Disney's Alice comedy, Alice Cans the Cannibals, starring Virginia Davis, is released. Nineteen thirty-eight. The Tournament of Roses Parade themes Playland Fantasies with a float featuring Disney's Snow White. Nineteen forty-three. The cartoon Donald Duck in Nutsland is released. <laughs> 1955. The publication Macaws features an article on Disneyland. Readers are informed that this July Walt Disney will realize a lifelong dream when the fabulous wonderland he is raising in the heart of California opens for the public. In the same year, the annual Tournament of Roses Parade kicks off in California with a Disneyland float featuring Disney characters and attractions from the not yet opening Disneyland. 1959. The Fantasyland Utopia, sponsored by the Richfield Oil Company, opens in Disneyland. 1966. Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse ride together in a white Chrysler Imperial as Grand Marshals of the Tournament of the Roads Parade in California. It's wonderful for me as an American. Right now, I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf the Burke of family Disney. was watching their very first Rose Parade. When Walt's vehicle stops to make a corner turn, Team Patty Burke runs up and shakes Mr. Disney's hand. Six years later, Pat will begin work at Webb, becoming one of Disney's top Imagineers. 1977. Bobby Allen, originally a ride operator at Disneyland, in 55 is named the Vice President of Walt Disney World. 1978. Disney's Main Street Electrical Parade makes a hair appearance outside of a theme park when it entertains fans during the halftime show of the annual Orange Bowl College football game in Miami. 1995. At Epcot, Symbiosis, the last of the three original attractions in the Land Pavilion, closes. 1996, Delta Airlines ends its sponsorship of Disney World's Delta Dream Flight attraction, located in Tomorrowland. 2000, Disney's Fantasia 2000 is generally released. We all know it's impossible to see music. Yet many composers have tried to take musical sounds and give them a pictorial meaning. Walt's original idea was that Fantasia would be a continuing work in progress. And Fantasia 2000 is the realization of that dream. 2001. The Villas at Wilderness Lodge, a Disney Vacation Club resort property, opens in Walt Disney World. A spouting geyser. It's hard to believe the villas at Disney's Wilderness Lodge lie just a boat launch away from Magic Kingdom Park. As a Disney Deluxe Villa Resort, it offers a kitchen or kitchenette and lots of extra space. And one or two bedroom villas have amenities like a DVD player, internet access, and a washer and dryer, so you certainly don't have to rough it. Of course, no mountain retreat is complete without water sports, and beautiful Bay Lake offers plenty. Back inside, the hardiest woodsman or the savviest city slicker can find a delicious meal served with a side. Rugged and rustic on the outside, there's no mistaking the luxury of the villas at Disney's Wilderness Lodge when it's time to return to relax after a day filled with Disney magic. 2002, an improved version of Disney's Beauty and the Beast is released to IMAX and other giant screen theaters. Walt Disney Pictures proudly presents Beauty and the Beast, featuring an original, never-before-seen musical sequence, coming January 1st, exclusively to IMAX and other giant screen theaters. 2004, the Disneyland Resort presents a parade float inspired by the park's new attraction, the Twilight Zone the Tower of Terror, at the Rose Parade in California. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, New attraction opening at Disney's California Adventure this May. And the real thing is only 83 feet taller than the float. <laughs> Lightning striking the top of the building. And then, of course, the elevator giving way with the people inside. And a sudden drop it is. Kind of depicting an old Hollywood hotel that 
is struck by lightning. Well, creating the tallest float ever, certainly a real challenge in terms of the engineering. At 7.31 a.m., Andrew da Costa from Seattle, Washington, becomes the first person in the nation to receive a free admission to a Disney theme park on his birthday. As part of Disney's What Will You Celebrate campaign, da Costa, who turns 49 today, is visiting Disney World's Magic Kingdom with his wife and two children. My birthday and we were lucky enough to get into the park free on my birthday it's a great way to start the new year new celebration being with disney it's always fun to go come to the Just parks uh, i grew up in southern california going to disneyland and i love disney world i love disneyland it's, it's a great place to be well, it's a disney park that's where dreams come true silly we're celebrating my birthday at, at walt disney parks great place to have a celebration great place to be disney way to go yeah 2010, Disney Parks kick off Give a Day, Get a Disney Day. The program has been created to inspire a million people to lend a helping hand and give back to communities in need. In return for their volunteer service, Disney will award these one million people with a free one-day admission ticket to a Walt Disney World Resort or Disneyland Resort theme park. This is the night, it's a beautiful night. And we call it well <laughs> another. Okay, volunteers, the sooner we get started, the sooner we get our free ticket to Disney. Have you heard the man? Move it! Beginning January, give a day of service to a participating organization and get a one-day ticket to one of our parks free. Visit DisneyParks.com for details.